Today we're going to talk about switches. So what we're going to do in this video is we're going to talk about five-way switches in a Strat. I think it's really important to understand how they work. Um, probably one of the number one questions we get in our inbox is, do you have a wiring diagram for X, Y, or Z? And what's really funny is nine times out of 10, it's usually a Strat or a Tele switch because they, when you look at them, they can be a little intimidating to know what's doing what, right? That's a Tele switch, hang on. Okay, here's a Strat switch. So they're, they're kind of the same, but they're kind of different. We'll talk about that in a minute. And then the other thing we're gonna do is at the end of this video, we're gonna go ahead and put another set of strings on the Epiphone Les Paul so that we can make a decision on which strings we like the best. And I have some thoughts about the strings that have been on there so far. So, but let's put the third set on first before we know that. For those of you that are not familiar, this is the guitar channel. We talk all about guitar stuff, guitar tone, tech, all that kind of stuff. Um, you're gonna dig it if you're new here. If not, you know the drill. Do me a favor and hit the like, like button, the subscribe button, um, and the notification bell. A couple videos a week, a live cool fun thing on Thursday at 5 p.m. Really super fun. So um, let's talk about switches. Um, we have some wiring diagrams over on patreon.com slash Dylan Talks Tone. I'm trying to get those kind of more of them going over there. If there's something you want to see in particular, let me know. But I want to talk specifically about this five-way switch today. Uh, they call it a five-way blade switch because um, basically what you have is you have the tabs that you solder on on the top, right? And then you have a blade on the bottom that's on the little pivot part that goes back and forth. And then each of these tabs has like a finger that pinches that blade. And on a strat switch, on a, um, basically what happens is when you turn, when you pull the switch from one setting to the next, that blade moves in between corresponding tabs and it creates connectivity between two points. So one of the things about a switch is just think of it this way. It's not doing anything fancy. All it's doing is it's connecting one thing to another. And so all you're doing is you're selecting one thing to another. That's it. And you're changing it. But on one of these switches, what can be confusing is this is a five way switch, but it only has four poles. It has four poles on each side. So one of the things we need to understand about a strat blade switch or a tele three-way switch or a four-way switch, any of these blades like this, is that this is actually two separate switches, okay? So we've got the tabs on this side that we solder to. We've got the tabs on this side that we solder to. They're two completely separate switches that are not connected to each other. Um, and a lot of people don't realize that if they're new to this. So you've got four tabs on this side, four tabs on this way, side totally not connected. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna break down, first of all, one side at a time and talk about what each one of them does. Now, again, if you look at the side of the switch right here, um, you'll see that there's a tab that is always connected to something. That would be this one on the end, okay? And actually, if you look in the other side, well, let's just concentrate on one side at a time. So this tab right here, is always connected. If you'll see, it's touching one side of the blade at all times, right? That's called your common. And then this other side of the tab touches, let's see, for, at first it touches that one, then it touches those two, then it touches that one, then it touches those two, then it touches that one. You see where we're going with this? So we've got that one that stays a common all the time. For lack of a better word, and I know somebody will get in the comments and say I'm wrong, but I don't really care. For lack of a better word, we're just gonna call that the output of the switch. Let me grab my coffee, it's freezing. So we can use that common as the output of the switch, right? So as we go from position one to position two, to position three, to position four, to position five, we can see where that one always stays hooked up and it selects which one of the other ones, or two at a time, the other ones are connected. 
So what do we do? Well, on that left side of that switch, according to this diagram, this is where our pickups are hook up, hook up right? It makes sense. So we have, you know, neck middle bridge or bridge middle neck, depending on which way we want it flipped. But that one always is the output. So at this point, we could just hook that output to an output jack. Be done. No tone, no tone at all, just no volume, nothing. Just hook that output to a jack. So the three other ones are inputs and they start working whenever the switch is in the corresponding position. That one is a common. What's another one we could do? We could probably take uh, the output of that side and we could go to a single volume pot, then to an output jack. We could go from a single volume to a tone off of that volume to the output jack. So for example, there's where you're like a five position Telecaster style situation where you would have three pickups. It would switch between, you're not even using the other side of the switch. We're talking about one side of the switch at a time. So how does a strat work? Well, like we said, in order for the other side of the switch to talk to that side of the switch, we gotta connect them, right? So we are, they're two completely separate sides. So now let's take a jumper wire and we'll put it between the outputs of both things. So now whatever's connected to the left side, it also affects the right side. But going back to our diagram, notice which ones on the right side are affected because you know, this switch is on the same shaft. So this blade on this side moves the blade on the inside in a slightly different spot. It's actually kind of opposite, basically. So we've got a common on one side and a common on the other side. So we've got five blade positions, just like on the other side. So now what we could do is we could connect the left side to the right side. And our left side is handling our pickup switching duties. And then our right side on a strat handles our tone and our and our output so typically um, that right side output you could use the left one it doesn't matter but that right side output um, would go to the output jack for example but it would also have connected to it based on the switch position some different tone circuits so you could use those other three positions on this other side for whatever you want. Do I want to put one tone knob? Do I want to have the tone knob only work in this position? Do I want to have the tone knob only affect these two pickups? Right? Very, very interesting stuff. So what I'm going to do is over at patreon.com, I'm going to put in a couple of popular wiring diagrams for strats so that now that you understand how the switch works, now you'll be able to look at that and go, oh, okay, so I could move this wire here and do this. To me, that's important, understanding how the switch actually works, not just defaulting to a wiring diagram. To be honest, when I'm working on this stuff, I always consult a wiring diagram because I don't want to be wrong and I don't want to send out something that I thought was going to work a certain way and then it didn't, you know what I mean? But having that signal flow in your head that these wires come in from the pickup, they go out the common, and you could do whatever you wanted with that on the one side. Or you could do like a regular strat, hook it to the other side, and then have these three other positions on the other side, technically five, uh, other positions on the other side to have your tone circuits work differently. My favorite tone circuit. So one of my favorite setups on any guitar is a single, single hum strat. Um, that's my, my favorite, one of my favorite things. And what we do with that is we typically do um, the tone working on the neck and the middle pickup, the top tone on a Strat, because you get three knobs. And then the bottom tone, we make that only work on the bridge pickup so that you can have a separate tone circuit for, with even a different cap if you wanted, for your um, humbucker, because it acts a little different than the single coils, you know what I mean? So you can have that flexibility, really super cool. All right, that switches. If you have any questions about this, if you're wondering about any of it, put it in the comments. Uh, maybe I will put together one for a three-way switch. Three ways are basically exactly the same. <clears throat> they just cover two pickups at a time, at all times, instead of this one is one, and then two, and then one, and then two, and then one. <clears throat> uh, three-way switch is just 
these two, the middle, or these two. Or wait, these two, these two, or these two. That's basically what it is. Um, anyway, I'll do, yeah, I'll do a separate video on that. I have it visualized in my head, but obviously it's not coming out right. I need more coffee. Uh, let's go ahead and put strings on the Les Paul and give you some tone samples. And then I'm gonna give you some final thoughts of what I think about that, uh, about that second set and maybe some initial thoughts about the third one. All right, so there you go. There's uh, set number three. Um, so my observations so far in this string test thing um, are very similar to what everybody's saying in the comments. Um, set number one was really super bright and jangly. Set number two wasn't as much. Uh, set number three is definitely <laughs> elixirs. As soon as I touched them to put them on, and they have this like foggy look to the outside of them, and you can just tell they're coated and. That, What's crazy is, years ago, elixirs were like the brightest, jangliest thing, and they stayed super bright and beautiful for a long time. But now, with this newer string technology stuff, you know, the other stuff, um, which I don't even know what I'm playing right now, but I'm pretty sure these are elixirs, because they feel, I just, I don't like how they feel. Um, and I know a lot of people are fans of them, but I just, I just don't like how they feel. So that's my observation on that one. One of the things that's interesting, as people are saying, oh, I love that first set because it's so bright and it's way more, it's got way more tone. You know, I'm, I don't like them as much now that I've played more. Why does the string deserve to color your sound so much? I don't think that's as good. Um, that's just my thought on it. And I know that's, that's my opinion, but I don't like how much it colors it like it makes it sound it I don't know it brings your attention to the string itself instead of to the whole guitar and I, I don't really like that that's just my opinion but anyway let me know what you think in the comments below uh, of these various strings let me know if you have any questions about wiring stuff I will put links to 
the switches and stuff that we recommend here and what I use every day, I'll put them in the description of the video so that you can buy them too. If you use links that we share from time to time, it does help out the channel a little bit and it is no additional cost to you and I do really appreciate it. Um, it is one of the things that like literally keeps us going. So I appreciate that very much. And I also want to give a shout out to everybody on Patreon who is part of what we're doing. We got a couple of new folks this week that joined us over there. So here is the current list of all of the peoples. So thank you so much to everybody. That's part of what we're doing over there. That's awesome. So make sure you go check that out. And uh, we'll see you soon.